Do you want to know the best Streamlabs OBS settings for Twitch streaming, YouTube streaming, literally any kind of streaming? I got you in today's video. I'm going to keep this as simple and easy to understand so anybody, just people like you and me, can understand. I'm not going to throw out some big scientific terms that aren't going to make any sense. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to drop a like on the video so other streamers can find this video. And the only thing that I ask is that you watch all the way through without skipping because if you skip over even just a five second segment, that could possibly be life or death for your stream and you'll end up with a two hour headache. I'll try to keep this as simple, easy, and fast as possible. But we got to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Own.TV. Own.TV is the number one place to get literally everything that a streamer could need. If you want to make your own emotes, they got their own emote maker. If you need a package of just literally everything, they got so many different packages like the Alpha Gaming series. If you want to make your own sub batches, your own sub emotes, your own avatar, your own trailer, your own gaming logo, they got it. They have templates for you to follow and fill out so you can customize it to the way that you want. Or if you don't want to do any of that they have pre-made packages and pre-made emotes for a very affordable price that any gamer can afford just to make your life that much easier i'll actually be going over how to use one of the packages later in the video so stay tuned for that so once again thank you so much to own.tv for sponsoring this video if you guys want to check it out my link is in the description down below which also helps support the channel but let's get started and head on over to streamlabs obs so let's head over to our settings by clicking the bottom left corner on the settings icon and now you can see we got a bunch of different tabs on the side for the settings so i'm going to start with general but we're going to be jumping around a little bit so on general there's only a couple things you should know for whatever reason your stream is not working and before this video you messed with a bunch of settings just for willy-nilly purposes you can go ahead and just click delete cache and restart and that will pretty much put your streamlabs obs back at factory settings so it's perfect if you're messing around with settings that you didn't know what it was and now you can't get your stream going the next setting that i have is confirm stream title and game before going live basically this is just if i forget to change my title from the last stream so it's a nice little reminder to have other than that if we scroll scroll down you have an option of automatically recording when you stream it's really just for convenience sake if you go and click go live it'll automatically start the recording tab like I have now however I don't use it because I just like to record when I want to so I like to do go live and then if I want to record I literally just click the record button but it's entirely up to you other than that that's pretty much it for everything on the general very easy stream tab this is gonna be where you're gonna want to stream to I like streaming to twitch so I'm logged in with my twitch account if you want to stream on YouTube log out of your twitch account and log log into your YouTube account and you'll be streaming on YouTube Facebook same thing output this is probably the most complex tab besides the advanced tab I will save this for later because we need some additional information about your computer in just a second for the audio tab the sample rate I like having it at 48 kilohertz because that's gonna give you the best audio quality for your stream other than that really two things we need to look at the desktop audio device one if you want usually by default that'll be fine and I'll show you what I mean by default if you have it on default it's just gonna go and pick your speakers that you have default so if I right click this audio go to sound settings here on Windows this is the device that it will be choosing so speakers audio box USB 96 that's the speakers that I'm using so if I X this out you can either click default it's the same thing for that I just want to make sure because I know these are my speakers I'm just gonna select them here so that way all the game audio and everything that I have is gonna be filtered through that audio device the next thing is mic one so right now you can hear me on this little bar going up and down right here because that is my microphone if I click on this and I click on anything other than that I have no other microphones plugged in even if my computer says so you will not be able to hear me so if you click on default the same thing will apply it'll go to whatever is defaulted in your window settings which we just did for the speakers but I know that the line audio box USB 96 is where my microphone is plugged in so I'm just gonna go ahead and click that there so that's our game audio our mic audio and our sample rate being the highest that can be for the best quality video this is paired with output so I'm not gonna go over this quite yet but we'll tail back in just a moment so now we're on hotkeys honestly I really like hotkeys because it makes convenience so much easier so the first thing that I like to do is I scroll all the way down go to my microphone and then I like to have a push to mute because if someone comes in the room next to you and you need to talk to them you don't want stream to hear that conversation so what you want to do is go whatever hotkey you want to set so let's do push to mute so anytime I push this button it's going to mute my mic once you click it it's waiting for literally any input so a mouse button a keyboard button so I'm gonna click the button end so anytime that someone enters the room I can just hold down the end key on my keyboard and that way my microphone will be muted so nobody on stream can actually hear my conversation one more hotkey that I really really like is if we scroll up and go to our scenes just go click on whatever scene you want scroll all the way down and then it'll say switch to scene right here so anytime I want to switch 
to my starting soon screen, I will just click the number one on my number pad. So if your keyboard has a number pad on the right or left side of it, you can just press number pad one, two, three, four, whatever those keys, because normally they're not really hotkey to anything. So I like to set all nine of those numbers to nine of my different scenes. So I can just easily press that button and it'll switch to a new scene. Other than that, you're feel free to make as many hotkey customizations as you like, but let's move on to the next setting, which is advanced. Advanced looks like a lot of rocket science, but really we don't have to worry about anything here. The only one that I really recommend having is dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. So a translation to normal people talk, if you're streaming and someone's downloading something or your internet drops for whatever reason, instead of your stream lagging and having buffer and like pausing and stuttering and all that, what it's going to do, it's going to lower the quality of your stream. So it's going to look a little bit worse until your internet connection gets better. So that way you're not going to have those stutters and those pauses and those buffers. It's going to be a smooth stream, but your quality is going to be a little bit lower. For the scene collections, this is where it gets really, really exciting. But let me open up a fresh version of Streamlabs to show you how to do this. So now that we're on a fresh version of Streamlabs OBS with absolutely nothing on it, I'm going to go to scene collections and go to import overlay file. What I did, I went to own.tv and I actually bought the dark mode series premium package because I want to show you guys exactly what this is and how easy it is to set up. They'll send you a little zip folder. So if you have WinZip, you can unzip it and get to this folder and it has literally everything and it makes it so easy to follow. So if we go to quick start, go to step two, which is the Streamlabs import. And then we just double click on this overlay. Watch the magic happen. It's crazy. Literally, it sets up everything you could ever need. It gives you four different options for your webcams. You can customize everything in them. You can hide things that you don't want. So if I just wanted to use this one, I could literally just hide all of the other ones that I don't want to use and I could just enable that one. So that way we could just click this webcam one that we want. We can drag it to wherever we want and have the game in the background and put our camera there. Also, it has all of our different scenes, even the little transition. Check this out. If I click here, it's got our transition. It's got this dope background. It has all your social things there that you can change under this scene. Literally, it does everything for you. It's absolutely insane. So if we wanted to go to just chatting, we'll click just chatting does our little transition and then we have all this it has all of my stuff saved from the last stream so obviously you can go ahead and move stuff around so it doesn't bump into each other you can customize the font you can literally do everything if you didn't even like that audio in the little transition what we can do is go here and they actually give you both files so you can go to your folder that you bought everything in so let's quickly navigate to that we'll go to animated transition and then this is the one with sound without sound so I'm gonna go without sound done done so now anytime we change now it just does the transition video with none of the sound. And then also if we go back, you can also check the folder that we got and literally it has everything. It has the font if you want to use the sci-fi adventure font with it. You can go to the files and it has everything. If you go into sounds, it has all the different sounds, the cheers, donation followers. So if you go into your alert box, you can go ahead and add all these manually. Same with the actual physical alert animations too. So it matches the background. It has your overlay, desktop wallpaper, panels for underneath your Twitch stream. Literally they hook you up and it's so affordable and it literally takes seconds. We did this in what, two minutes tops? Absolutely crazy. Would highly, highly recommend that you guys check out own.tv. Once again, the link is in the description down below. So feel free to check that out if you want to help support the channel. Notifications really don't matter. Appearance doesn't really matter either. So moving on to remote control. Basically, this is the free version of the Elgato Stream Deck. What you can do is use your phone's QR scanner and it'll turn your phone into an Elgato Stream Deck pretty much. So that way you don't have to pay for one. Moving on to virtual webcam doesn't really matter. Game overlay doesn't matter. And Prime doesn't matter if you're a free user. So now let's circle back to the video tab. For the video and output tab, this is going to matter what kind of computer you have and what internet speed you have. So let's head over to Google real quick. Right now we're on speedtest.net. I'll leave links to all of the websites I'm using in the description down below so you can follow along. First thing you want to do is go ahead to speedtest.net, click go, and now it's going to measure your internet speed. So we got to wait and see what our upload speed ends up being. So now that we have our upload speed, mine is close to 12 megabits per second. Let's go on to the next page. For the next page, you want to go to the Twitch encoding chart. Once again, link down in the description so you can follow along at home. And this is basically going to give us all the information that we need based off of our upload speed. So if we go back to our upload speed, you can see that our upload speed is roughly about 12 megabits per second. If we want to translate that into kilobits per second, we just multiply by a thousand. So it'll be about 12,000 kilobits per second. So 
if you're looking at the chart, now you can see what quality you can stream at. So I have 12,000 kilobits per second, and the highest one is 1080p 60 frames per second, and that only takes 6,000 kilobits per second. But you always want to add in a buffer in case families watching Netflix or downloading videos or playing World of Warcraft. So I'm going to take about 30% off of what my bitrate is, which leaves us roughly with about 9,000 kilobits per second, which is still plenty of bitrate to be able to stream at the highest. However, I choose not to stream at the highest one because if people are on their phones and their mobile data isn't that high, chances are they're not going to be able to stream your Twitch stream at 1080p 60 frames per second, and it's going to be super choppy for them. So what I like to do is meet everybody in the middle at 720p 60 frames per second. It only takes 4,500 kilobits per second. So I think that's a nice trade-off for having a quality looking stream while also making it accessible for everybody to be able to watch and not letting the mobile users or someone with a bad internet connection not be able to watch your stream. Now we need to scroll up and see if we have an NVIDIA NVEC or if we have X264. And we can do that by going into our Streamlabs settings really quick, go under output, and then from here, you'll click this drop down of the encoder. And if you have NVEC, that means you have an NVIDIA card. And then if you don't, it'll just say X264 and you'll use that one. So you'll either use one or the other. If you have an NVIDIA card like me, we'll be using this side. If you don't have an NVIDIA card, you'll be using this side. So now let's scroll down. We want to do 720p by 60 FPS. So let's go into our settings and input this information. So I brought them up side by side so we can compare, but let's actually go to the video tab first. For your base canvas resolution, I would recommend that you do 1920 by 1080p because that's what majority of games are run at and that's what's going to keep it simple and work for pretty much majority of the computers out there. Now we want to take a look over here where it says resolution and we want to have that as 1280 by 720p as our output scaled resolution. So you're going to want to match the one in the chart to your output resolution because we want to stream at 720p so it needs to be 720p for the output resolution because that's what we're outputting to the stream. For your downscale filter you're going to want to use the 32 samples. For the FPS type you want to use common and then since we want to do 60 frames per second obviously the common FPS value is going to be 60. So if we're streaming at 720p 60 FPS this is what our settings are going to look like. The other information in this chart we're going to be moving on into the output tab. So for the output tab there's obviously a lot of choices here. The first thing you want to do is change your output mode to advanced. If you leave it on simple you're not going to have as much control as I do right now. So the first thing we mentioned was the encoder. You either found out if you have an Nvidia card or if you don't. So if you have the Nvidia card obviously choose hardware NVEC and then if you have the option is new pick the new version and if you don't then just do the X264. First thing you want to do is rate control. You want it as CBR which means constant bit rate. For that now we look at our chart it needs to be 4500 for the bit rate so we put in 4500. It says our keyframe interval needs to be two seconds so we'll put in two in the keyframe interval. So now for the profile the profile needs to be set at high set your psycho visual tuning on GPU to zero and then it's saying that the B frames are going to be two so we set max B frames to two. If you're using the software X264 one because you don't have the Nvidia one or you have the AMD card then the changes are going to be a little bit different so let's go ahead and run through that extremely fast. Let's scroll down to our new one under X264 so right here so you're going to do CBR you're going to do 4500 keyframe to two and then this is where it changes so the CPU usage preset you don't have on the Nvidia one but you do have it for the X264 and basically what this means the faster it goes the less CPU it's going to take however the quality is going to be worse so what you can do to test this out is actually go to your task manager so you can do control alt delete go to performance and then you can see your CPU right here if you're streaming and you just see like your CPU is at like 90% 80% or higher that means that you're usually going to want to change this option to ultra fast super fast or whatever higher than you had it before however if you see your CPU is just chilling down here you can easily move it down here so that way you'll get better quality and it's going to put more traction onto the CPU so that way it'll give you better quality while also trying to maintain a balance between your CPU. This option is going to really depend on your CPU so you can just start off with let's say fast and then you can kind of change it from there depending on your CPU usage. And then for your profile you're going to want high, tune doesn't matter, and then this doesn't matter as well so you're good to go. One more thing that I want to go over is the audio track. So the audio track that we have set here is one and let me show you what that audio track actually means. If we come back to Streamlabs OBS we know that the audio track for our stream is one. So anything that's on audio track one the stream is going to hear and we can see what audio sources are on that by if we go to this little mixer wheel right here and then we can go ahead and see right here so we want any of my game volume that's on track one that's highlighted they can hear that my microphone is on track one so they can hear that basically all that means is that anything that's highlighted on whatever audio track you picked in this instance it's one they will be able to hear whichever ones are highlighted in your mixer so if you have like three different media sources playing a bunch of stuff they're going to be able to hear whichever ones are highlighted on all those media sources if you want to learn more about Twitch streaming 
in general or how to grow your Twitch channel, you can feel free to check out my Twitch course in the description down below, which goes over the ultimate guide on how to successfully start a Twitch channel. Otherwise, feel free to check out the Patreon if you want to help support me make more videos. But I think these videos on the end screen are really going to help you out. So I'll see you in the next one.